Yes. Okay. Hey, Tariq. Hey, Juan. Hey, brother Tariq. What's, What's up, sir, Major? How are you? So, What's up, up King Flex? So much love to your new papa. Oh, thank you so much, family. So we're talking about reparations or not. Is there any opposition here to reparations? What's um, the general um, consensus here with some of the people? Well, brother, uh, Mr. Uh, Christian, um, forget his last name, but Christian was opposed to it. Uh, after holding his face, we find out that he's a Romanian, so he's an immigrant. Mm. Uh, he's a gay immigrant at that, mm. so we just kept finding more. He told us that he changed his last name, changed his name to uh, to appear to be white because it's close in proximity. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, you know, uh, he was opposed to reparations, uh, but I think he's getting better. Christian, go ahead and speak for yourself. Yes, um, I was opposed to it because like because I was afraid what the inflation rate would be but you know I had somebody say you know we can get tax deductions from the former colonial and the former African tribes or former African or present African nations and put a 10% tax on them I forgot the person who said that but you know whoever said that you know I want to say you're a very smart person to do say that and he was giving me the math and the statistics and the, uh, the breakdown he was saying that it would cost between 12 and $13 trillion. And he was talking about the aid to Ukraine, and which I was totally against for, because it didn't help nobody in this country. And, you know, I am opening my mind because, you know, after the Civil War, they were, posed, they were promised 40 acres and a mule, and they never happened. They only got 100 years of segregation and, and, and gerrymandering and the black representatives from South Carolina and the former Confederacy they were all, you know, they, that was when voting restrictions were put on to keep the back then majority black South to have white minority rule. So um, I think my mind is opening now when it came to the mass breakdown and the uh, taxing the imports and the exports of, of African products or European colonial products coming in and out to the United States. So go ahead. Right. Now, did you do any opposing when they were giving money to white LGBT organizations? Because the government didn't tax nobody. They just used our tax dollars to allocate millions of dollars to LGBT organizations, which they do now. Did you oppose any of that? I'm opposed to that right now. I didn't know that was going on. I am against that. I'm against the LGBT, EFG, HIJK, LPQRS, whatever agenda they are. I'm against it. I think it's child abuse. I think it's gross. I mean, it's about destroying the family. And I'm against anything when it comes to that. Okay, but we never see you guys put up much of a fight if you're against it. You guys will host spaces against reparations, but you'll say you're against stuff that goes on with the white LGBT community, but you never host spaces about it. People say they're against stuff that Kyle Rittenhouse does, but they never really fight that hard for it. But they'll fight for a because he's a grifter. Be because they'll they'll fight against something like Bill Cosby. You go tooth and nail to fight to make sure that he gets punished somehow, but you never make sure that the people in your community is punished. So why not have that same effort that you have towards black people, towards the people in your community? Well, Kyle Rittenhouse is a grifter. I'll just be honest. A lot of these Republican so-called conservatives are grifters. I'll be honest with that. And like... But you never not, do anything about those grifters, though. That's that's what we're saying. Nobody ever does anything. You give lip service and talk about how bad they are. But nobody ever seems to lift a finger. Everybody acts powerless to do anything about it. You say you don't I agree do? with all of You say you're the same thing you're doing now. You're hosting a space talking about reparations for Foundation of Black Americans. But I don't see none of you guys hosting spaces, not one, not ever, saying that the white LGBT community should get all of these millions, even billions of dollars allocated to them. And they've never been aggrieved like that. Well, I do, have, that? I do have spaces against the LGBT propaganda and agenda. And if you no, like no, 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 no. Y'all have, you will talk about the pedophilia, which most people are against that. I'm talking about just all of the resources allocated towards them just in general. You guys don't have a problem with that. I, I do have a problem with that. You know, there's a thing called the gay mafia and I can't control that. I mean, I can, I mean, I protest in front of a, in front of an agency like that. There's people who do protest. Like what I said, you know, those are big corporations like Nike, like Google, like uh, uh, Apple. They do donate to organizations like that. And I think it's gross. I think it's disgusting. 
And like, I'm against that. I really am. Like, I, like, listen, I moved out of Atlanta because I was tired of that air community to Chattanooga, Tennessee, a smaller town and get away from stuff like that. Like, I am about as against gay marriage as one can be. I'm against gay propaganda, the gay corporations, the the mafia. I mean, like, because, like you said, why are there companies donating to gay um, companies or gay agencies, but they're not donating to black-owned businesses? But, or, okay, you're, you say you're against that, but you're LBGT, right? I'm gay, but I'm not part of their community. How can you be not a part of the community and... That's what your sexual identity is. My identity and me being participating in their community is two different things. If, well, you have to be gay with somebody. You have to be gay within certain people in a certain community. So by your acknowledgement of your sexuality, you're a part of the community. Well, you know, the gay community is not one group. There, people do think differently, you know? It's not one well, monolith. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, no, 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 no. Because that's where all those letters come in. Those LGBTQIA element OP that codifies everybody as a specific group. And if something happens to that group or somebody aggrieves them in any way, they work together as a group to punish anybody who not only opposes them or who don't want to participate with what they got going on, but anybody who challenges some of the pedophilia that goes on and that they promote. So they operate as a group. And I have yeah. been attacked. I have been attacked by that group before because I, where I stand, that's why I moved out of Atlanta because, you know, I had several hundred friends there and, you know, they were going one way. I was going another way. And I said, I can't take it no more because I was constantly getting attacked. Okay. Because <laughs> Okay. Okay. And let me let me touch. Uh, okay. This is what our brother Neely Fuller says. How some people in the dominant society will take both sides of an argument. I want black people. This is a case study so that you can understand. In the system of white supremacy, they know how to take both sides of an argument. They'll sit here and say that they oppose something while participating in it. This is a very deceptive tactic of white supremacy. It's like good cop, bad cop. They do that with Republicans and Democrats. They even do that with Kyle Rittenhouse. They'll sit up here and say that they oppose Kyle Rittenhouse, but these will be the same people who get on, get on a jury and who will acquit him and then get out there in the protest. I told black people this all the time. A lot of these people who were in these Black Lives Matter protests, some of these people were staunch white supremacists. They couldn't stand black people, but they know how to play both sides of the fence. And even with the reparations conversation, they'll get in our circles and be like, okay, yeah, I think reparations are cool. But when it comes down to it, they'll be the main ones opposing it. Remember when they had the reparations commission, they had all of these people on here talking about how um, we share this shared aggrievement. Black people and other minorities have the same shared disenfranchisement. And then when they want to vote on who gets reparations and to make it lineage based, a lot of them were voting against that. You understand? So a lot of these people will try to undermine our reparations conversation while sitting here acting like they are supporting it. So we got to be very careful of things like this. So this is a good space so we can understand how the tactics work. OK, but let's be clear. This Christian person, I'm, I'm letting you know now, this Christian person is opposed to reparations. I'm letting my family here know that. What this Christian person wants to do is see our talking points about it so that they can go back to their community and kind of think take their way around opposing our talking points. They study our conversations. They study our Twitter spaces. They study what we're talking about and they study our talking points. And the name of the game is to find a way to undermine it. So always be clear of that. We are not we don't have any ally in your family. All right. As long as we're clear of that, we're going to be good to go. When I came in here, Christian had a whole nother attitude. Why did I cuss you out for an hour in this room? And now you sound like, oh, I'm open to reparations. I don't know what they're talking about. What's up with that, Christian? Hey, do y'all think, think this new Democratic base, the way the Democrats are acting, it seems like they want to let all these immigrants in so that immigrants can be the new base and the LGBTQ. Of they what? Mean, they don't even know like, how they're going to vote. It, it, and these immigrants are coming in, siding with white supremacy, voting for the damn Republicans. That's the trick bag. Yep. These, these immigrants, oh. 
these immigrants come in on policies that black folks fight for and these democratic policies. And the minute they get here, they find the first white supremacists to snuggle under and start wearing MAGA hats. So the Democrats don't know what to do. That's backfiring on them. Yep. So. Absolutely right. And this That's guy, Christian, said, even said that he's a Trump supporter. Uh, you can see by the banner. And then he also said that January 6th, he was there. Oh, I'm not shocked. Again, all of this stuff about, oh, Kyle Rittenhouse is a grifter. This person is right along with them white supremacists. I keep telling, we did a whole movie called Buck Breaking, telling people how the white LGBT community, they are some of the most staunch white supremacists out there. They are not our allies, man. These folks have practiced anti-black racism from day one. Many of the slave owners were anti-black racist and LGBT. Um, a lot of the people who were pushing slavery legislation were LGBT and trans. Man, there's a long history of white LGBT people trying to disenfranchise and harm black people throughout history. Um, Cecil Rhodes was LGBT who dominated and, and disenfranchised many people over there in Africa. So they have a long history of that. But then they come around. Yeah. And, yeah. Then they come around us using civil rights bills that we fought for to protect them and started they, they come over here using these 1960 terms from dr king and all of these people talking about we got to get into good trouble and fight for pride and we have to talk about dr king injustice in one place is injustice everywhere they like to quote dr king and use his quotes taken out of context for LGBT movements, but it was an LGBT man, J. Edgar Hoover, who helped kill Dr. King and other black people in the 60s. And they sit back behind the scenes, nudging each other, laughing about this type of stuff. So we have to be more politically um, astute and stop being so naive as to have these people around us acting like they're our allies and they're here to undermine us. I told people the difference between a, a right-wing white supremacist and a left-wing white supremacist is at least the right-wing white supremacist will stand across the street, the street and throw a knife at you. And you can duck the knife. The left-wing white supremacist will come right up next to you, hug on you, and slowly poke the knife into you. They're way more dangerous. That's what they do to us. They get around us acting like they're allies, hugging up on us, rubbing up on us, protesting with us while they're slowly putting the knife in us. So we have to wake up to that family. I like to have Marcel please talk. He's running for Congress. And I like to hear uh, what is he running for and his uh, uh, points. Go ahead, Marcel. Um, Christian, first. I am technically my race is over, even though I am protesting the results because I feel there was a lot of malfeasance to happen. So yesterday I went to court. I wasn't able to make it to court, but the other candidate on the ballot actually made a motion to continue with the protest. So <clears throat> it was too many discrepancies with people saying they didn't see my name on the ballot to Republicans and Democrats saying that for the, 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 the data they had showed the vote going in my favor to the Clyburn's daughter being the head of the South Carolina Democratic Party. So I'm officially protesting the votes. Nothing may come of it, but we'll see. Um, I was running for South Carolina District 6, and I was running on a reparations platform. So I know right there I wouldn't have had your vote, apparently. And I want to say that I'm not sure. You said that you're worried about inflation, and you support Donald Trump. Am I correct? I do. So let me ask you a question. Are you familiar with Donald Trump's fiscal history when he was in office? Yes, that's one thing I disagreed with. Okay, well, you still support him. You disagree that much. Donald Trump cut taxes to their lowest point ever in American history. During that time, the stupid wars that he, he inherited in Afghanistan and Iraq were happening. We were spending around $20 million on that a month. Okay, he sent out several stimulus checks to the United States of America. I actually supported him doing that. I think that was great. The American Rescue Plan passed, which took un unemployment from $300 a week to 